Here we go. All right, so what I mentioned, you know, in sort of my kind of sum up to where we're going with this last lesson in this section is we're going to be looking at graphing these a little bit differently. We're going to be using what's called a parent pattern for these particular functions, okay? So let's start. You'll notice that I have a table up here, but the table is labeled a little bit odd, right? So we have this R and L is going to be our right and left shift. This U and D is going to be our up and down shift. Here you can see we have a times to by A, and then we have a new up and down shift, okay? So I'll explain as we go along. So let's start with a function that looks like this. We're going to take and we're going to graph the function F of X is equal to the absolute value of X plus five minus three. Okay. So the first thing that you're going to do for each one of these is I want you to identify an A, an H, and a K. I want you to identify an A, an H, and a K. Okay, so go ahead and write those down. A, H, and K. Okay, you got them? So you should put for A is going to be... 1, okay, H, you should have put negative 5, and K, you should have put negative 3, right? Because again, remember the parent pattern that we've learned for our transformed function, right, is going to be here. I can even write it if you want to jot it down. We can write it here. The transformed function is going to look like this. It's going to be F of X is equal to A, absolute value, X minus H, absolute value, plus K. Right, that's our transformed function there. And since it's x minus, if we have x plus in our problem, then that means that came from x minus negative, right? So we need to know that. Okay, we're also going to make some notes after these so that we're aware of what these controls are doing. Now, when a is 1, I want you to jot this down, there is no compression slash stretch. Okay, there's no compression slash stretch. We're going to use those words a lot. You need to know them, compression and stretch. Okay, all right. H negative 5 is going to give us a leftward facing shift of 5. And K of negative 3 is going to give us a downward shift of 3 or a translation of left 5 and down 3. Yeah, everybody good with that? That makes sense? So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to plot our H and our K, okay? So in our parent function, right, it always started here at the origin. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take our origin point and we're going to go left one, two, three, four, five, and down one, two, three. And right there is where we're going to put our transformed function point. Now, keep this in mind. By moving our vertex over here, we've now accounted for this math that was changed in the parent function. Make sense? We've accounted for the, the H negative five and the K negative three, okay? So we don't have to worry about that anymore. Now, if you recall with the parent function, the pattern was put in a positive one, get out a positive one. Put in a positive, positive two, get out a positive two, right? This is the F of X equals absolute value X, right? Put in a positive three, get out a positive three. And then if we did negatives, it was put in a negative one, what did we get out? A positive one, right? And put in a negative two, what did we get out? A positive two. And if put in a negative three, what did we get out? A positive three, right? Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to check and see if our A value, which is a multiplication of after we do our absolute value, right? So we do our absolute value, we come up with some value, some number, and then we multiply by A, right? That's, that's right out in front of that there, right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our parent output and we're gonna multiply it by A to get a new output if it's a new output. So in this case, it would just simply be times by one. And we're gonna write this down, times by one, times by one, times by one, times by one, times by one. 
And what we're going to do is we're going to multiply our parent output by A to get our new output, which in this case isn't going to change anything, but it will once we start bringing some A's into it. And now what we're going to do is we're going to start here and we're going to follow the directions from our original input and our new output. So where we see a positive, we're going to go right and a negative, we're going to go left or positive, we're going to go up, negative, we're going to go down. So this would be from the new vertex, right one, up one. From the new vertex, right one, up one. Make sense? So let's do that. Let's go right one and up one from the new vertex. And then again, from the new vertex, we're going to go right two, up two. So then we're going to go right one, two and up one, two. And then you can see we're going to go right three and up three. So we're going to go right one, two, three and up one, two and three like that. And then we have here, this is left one and up one, left two and up two, left three and up three. Follow the pattern. You see what I'm doing? These are parent patterns. Okay. <laughs> left one, up one, left two, up two, left three, up three. And then we can draw our graph. In this case, it's going to be linear like that. Like that, we can put some arrowheads on our graph, and we have now drawn a transformed function using a parent pattern. See what I did? Okay, why don't you write the domain and the range? And for this one, we will do it in inequality notation. You go ahead and write domain and range for this one in inequality notation. Ready, go. Here's what you should have put right there in inequality notation. Good? Yes, sir. Would it be wrong if you put the A is 3 is less than or equal to Y, which is less than or equal to B? No, that's fine. You can put that too. Yeah, that's another way to put it. So. Okay, now here's what I want to point out, all right? Okay, is that you'll notice that in this particular case, our parent function didn't change in terms of it getting narrower or wider or flipping upside down or anything like that because our a value was one. So essentially what we did was we took our parent function here like this and we just swoop, swoop, shifted it left and down. Right? Does that make sense? And then we recreated it in this new position over here. And so you can see that the, the parent pattern function remains the same. Right one, up one right two up two same thing when we had the new one it was right one up one and right two up two and that's because our a values are all one but that's not always going to be the case right that's not gonna be the case in the very next one so let's see what that looks like doing them this way when our a value is not one all right so next graph we're going to draw we're going to say f of x is equal to two times the absolute value of x minus one minus six and I want you to start with an A an H and a K come up with those values and then in parentheses tell me what you think those controls are going to do okay should have come up with this right here Okay, so stretch is when we take a graph and we make it narrower. It's like we're grabbing it in the middle and pulling it up and we're stretching it narrower and compressing as if we push it down. That's going to make it go flatter and wider out, okay? And so that's where we use that language is stretching and compressing, all right? And then we have, we have our H and we have our K, right? Okay, let's write in our parent pattern for absolute value. So we know our parent pattern is going to be right one, up one, right two, up two, right three, up three, and then left one, up one, left two, up two, left three, up three. We're gonna write our parent pattern in to remind ourselves what that is. Now this time we have an A value other than one, right? So let's write in our times to by A value here, times by A value, times by A value, times by A value, all the way down. And so after we were to move our vertex point, which we will do in just a second, we would then take our 
output of our parent pattern, but then we have to multiply it by two to get our new output here. So this time it's gonna go right one up two. You see what I did? What I did was I multiplied these two values together and then these two values and then these two values. So when we go right one, instead of going up one from the parent pattern, we're gonna go up two. And when we go right two, instead of going up two, we're gonna go up how many? Four. And when we go right three, how many we're gonna go up? Six. Okay. And then on the left side, when we go left one, are we going up or down? We're going up, how many? Two. two, yeah, right, good. And when we go left two, we're going up four. And when we go left three, we're going up six, okay? All right, so let's get our H and K set first. So put your vertex where your H and K are going to take you to go, and then you can start graphing with your new parent pattern. But let's get the H and K vertex first. So move your vertex to your H and K. So you should go right one and down one, two, three, four, five, six. And your new vertex should be right here. And then you're gonna go right one and up two. And then you're gonna go right two and up one, two, three, four. And then you're gonna go right one, two, three and up one, two, three, four, five, six, like that. And the nice part about graphing these, right, is because if I go left one, I'm going to go up two. I could just use my graph to sort of like picture where I need to be and then just kind of move over one and come up and move over one like that, right? And so then when I draw my graph, it's going to look like this and like this. Now, just for sake of comparison, what I do want you to do, and maybe you want to, if you want to take a second to grab a colored pencil, or if you have a colored pencil, you could use that, or just a lighter thing on your pencil, that's fine. But what I do want you to do is, I want you to graph the parent function from the same moved vertex. In other words, what would this have looked like if we didn't multiply by two? Well, then we would have started at the same vertex here, right? But then this time, we would have gone up one and two and three, right one, up one, right two, up two, or that's left, sorry, left one, two, and three. And so then I'm gonna grab my green here. And I'm gonna do this, and I'm gonna do this. Because what I want you to be able to see is the difference between the transformed function and the parent function. Okay, so make sure that you indicate that by highlighting it or using some kind of another color or something so that you know which one is the transformed function and which one is the parent function. Make sense? See what we're doing? We're using these patterns and then the multiplying by the A to come up with how are we going to move and change our directions from our vertex. Okay, let's do domain and range for our parent function. This time we'll do set notation. All right, so we'll do set notation for domain and range for the transformed function. Okay, here's your domain and range, like that. So you got a bracket on the negative six because that's a solid dot that's included and then it goes to positive infinity with your parentheses. Making sense so far? Everything fairly easy? Okay, good. Let's do another one to the back side. All right, let's see if you can do this one all on your own. All right, so you're gonna fill in the table accordingly. You're gonna write the A, H, and K's descriptions. You're gonna graph both the transform function and the parent function from the new vertex, okay? And find the domain and the range. Everything's straight through. You think you can do it? All right, let's give it a try. Okay, so here's the absolute value function I want you to graph. And, and I'll give you some steps along the way. That's We'll do this one with steps, and then the last one you'll do all on your own. All right, so start with that, and then I'm going to do the A, H, and K first. Okay, take a look at the A, H, and K. There's a little something I added in there. 
So it is stretched by three, but it is also reflected down. And when we reflect, we reflect over a particular line. In this case, we're reflecting over a horizontal line. That's our mirror line. So we're reflecting over the line y equals seven. Think about that for a second, right? If it was not negative, it would start at seven and go up, right? But it's been reflected over that line, that horizontal line that runs through the vertex. Okay, good. All right, fill out your table and then do your graphs. The table filled out correctly, should have looked like that. Okay, let's take a look. This is what I was talking about. Yeah, I, the, parent, the parent function, I just want you to see the difference between, so that you get an idea of the difference between how it's been stretched, right? So that means that the gap that is in between the rays that make up the parent function is narrower, right? That angle is less, right? And so we begin to see how that stretch affects that parent function, even though the parent function is still reflected. And again, this would be the line in which we reflected everything over because otherwise it would have gone like that, right? So then we flip it over that line, that's that mirror line. Does that make sense? Everybody good so far? Okay. All right. This one is yours. From beginning to end, let's see how you do. F of x is equal to negative 0 0.4 absolute value of x plus 5. A, H, K, estimate your points as best as possible. Okay? Go ahead. You don't need to do the parent function on this one. All right? Just do the transformed function. What domain range do you have? Uh, let's do set notation. Here's what you should have come up with for your graph. So this one's a compression, right, which is where it gets wider. It's also being reflected over that line y equals 5. Got our table filled out, got our graph points estimated, and then came up with our domain and range using the parent patterns to do this. So, thing to remember about absolute value, the parent pattern is, it's one right, one up, two right, two up, three right, three up, right? One left, one up, two left, two up, three left, three up, okay? So keeping the parent pattern in mind. Okay, good? Okay, let's do another one. Let's talk about quadratics. There you go. Okay, quadratics. So let's start with this function here, f of x is equal to x minus 2 groups squared minus 5. Okay, let's do our a, h, and k. That should be pretty straightforward. We'll start with our a, h, and k. Go ahead and do those with your descriptions. A, H, and K should have looked like that. No compress or stretch. And then we got a right two shift and a down five shift. So let's do our vertex right now. So let's go, we can move our vertex from starts off at the origin. So we can go right two, down five. So we'll go right one, two, and down one, two, three, four, five. And then we can account for our H's and K's in our graph. All right, let's talk about the parent pattern for quadratics, okay? So right one was up one, right two was what? Up four, up four right? Drop in an input, square it, get an output, right? So this is the squared one, right? So up four, so then it's right three, up nine. What about left one? <laughs> It'd still be up one, right? Because it's going to come out positive, right? Because negative one squared 
is positive one, right? Okay, so that's going to be still be up one. And then left two, up four, left three, up nine. Okay, and in this case, we're just doing the times by one, so we're not affecting the compression or the stretch. So we know that our, our pair pattern is still going to remain right one, up one, right two, up four, right three, up nine left one, up one, left two, up four, left three, up nine. And because those numbers aren't constant in the change, because it's a exponential, essentially what we're having here is an exponential graph, we're getting this smooth curved graph. So we can plot our points here. We can go to the right one and up one, to the right two and up one, two, three, four, and then to the right one, two, three, and up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, like that. And then again, I can model that over here. Left one, up one, left two, up four, left three is going to be right there. And then we want kind of this smooth curve coming down in here and then heading back out this way like that. And so essentially what we've done is we've taken our parent graph, which would have sat right here, and we shifted it left two and down five, but we didn't compress it or stretch it or reflect it at all. So very much the same as absolute value, just this got this smooth graph as opposed to a linear relationship, right? And then our domain and range. So we will go inequality again here. We'll just bounce back and forth. So then this, is, of course, is all real numbers, right? Because we're continuing to extend left and right forever and ever. And so we've got our negative infinity domain, positive infinity. Then our range, right? Our bottom end is at what? negative five, right? So our range has to be greater than negative five. And so we can say our Y has to be greater than or equal to negative five. Yes, Nick. On the test, are you gonna say like right to domain and inequality or recess? Or we should pick? I may ask you a specific one, or I may tell you you can pick either way. But since we're practicing both, uh, I could hold you accountable for either one. Okay, that wasn't too bad, right? Okay, parent pattern, one, one, two, four, three, nine. So absolute value was one, one, two, two, three, three on both sides. This one is one, one, two, four, three, nine on both sides. Okay, that's fairly easy to remember. All right. Okay, let's do this one. So we're going to do f of x is equal to negative two times x plus three group squared plus six. Picture in your mind right now, before you do anything else, picture, look at the graph, and in your mind, picture what is this going to look like on your graph. Think about where it's going to go. Just kind of get a visual idea. You got an idea where you think it's going to go? Okay. Once you have your idea, go ahead and get started. Okay. Start with your A, H, and Ks, then your table, and then your graph, and then your domain and range. We'll do set notation for domain and range. Okay, so just a checkpoint, A, H's, and K's should have looked like that. Table should have looked like that. All right, should have come up with this right here. And then obviously with the 18, you're not going to be able to graph that off the graph, but that gives you enough anchor points. And when you get to your homework, you're actually going to be writing the ordered pairs because you won't have tables. You're going to be writing the ordered pairs for your points. So that's that's enough for you to draw your graph right there. You should be able to get those in there. Questions before we move on? Everybody good? Makes sense? Okay. Emerson and Nico, I want to talk to you guys. Uh, really quick, we just want to talk to you guys. Let's do this one. So f of x is equal to 1 fifth x minus 1 squared. Can't read my own handwriting. Huh? Oh, sorry. I'm pretty sure that's a minus 7. Yeah. 
Let's go with that. We'll go with minus seven. All right. I'll let you do this one all the way through. Here's what you should have come up with for this one. Okay, good. All right, let's do this. Um, I'm going to give you one more on the quadratic to write down, but we're not going to take the time to do it right now because we're running a little short on time. But I will complete this one on the video notes so you have this one to go back and check the answers for, whereas you won't have that for the homework. Okay, so let's have you do this one here. 3x squared minus 8. Okay, so 3x squared minus 8. So we'll do that one if we have time at the end. If not, I'll go back and do that one at the end for you. But let's move on to our last one for today. Okay, so we're going to do square roots. All right, let's start with... This one here, f of x is equal to the square root of x plus 5. Okay, so go ahead and do your a, h's, and k's for this one. Okay, there's your A, H's, and K. So there's no stretch or compression on this one. Again, the pattern, parent pattern is X minus H under the square root bar, right? So this is going to be X minus negative 5 to get X plus 5 there. Okay. All right, let's put our end point. It's not a vertex anymore, right? Because vertex means turning point. We're never turning here with this one. But let's put our end point where we think it should go. So go ahead and put your end point where you think it should go. Okay, if you did it right, you would have gone to the left, one, two, three, four, five, and then no up or down. So that becomes your new end point for your square root function. So let's talk about parent patterns for our square root. So when we were doing our parent pattern, we made it easy by using numbers that we could square root easily, right? So we said we could talk about, well, what happens if we had a one? We took the square root of that. We got a one, right? And so then the next input I gave you was four because we could take the square root of four and get what two and then we could take what would be the next easiest one to do nine and then we would get a three right and if we wanted to we could go 16 and four and you know and then it's just going to get too big for us to graph on a piece of paper you know so so we, we will only use these four here so you can kind of block this out and really mostly we'll only use the you know the one four and nine so that'll be enough for you to graph these as the one, four, and nine, okay? So those will be our, our parent pattern functions. Now in this case, right, this is gonna be multiplied by one. So we, we actually won't, we won't even use this one. We'll just cross this one through here. So that means we're gonna have an output still again of one, two, and three, right? So we can go from our new vertex, we can go right one, up one, and then we can go right one, two, three, four, and we're gonna go up one, two. And then lastly, from our vertex, that's four, so we can go five, six, seven, eight, nine, up one, two, and three. And then we know that our parent pattern graph looked like this curve that was just kind of continuing to go upward and outward, but getting flatter as it went by the farther distance it went to the right, but still having that ability. All right, let's do inequality notation for domain and range for this one. So domain on this time is limited and range is limited, right? So in this time, what's the farthest, what's the lowest that our graph could go in terms of domain? Yeah, so it, it's not, it's going to go no lower than negative five, right? So then our domain is going to have to be all the numbers that are greater than negative five. So we could say X is greater than or equal to negative five. And then how about our range? Where does our graph have to be above? It has to be above zero, right? Yeah. So Y has to be greater than or equal to zero. Yeah. The first point is solid. So. 
That, that was the exponential. Yeah, that was the exponential. Okay, so that's pretty easy, right? So when it follows that same pattern, right, it's going to be 1, 1, 4, 2, 9, 3. So think about the patterns. This is what I want you to get in your head are these patterns, right? Absolute value is 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3. Quadratic is 1, 1, 2, 4, 3, 9. Square root is 1, 1, 4, 2, 9, 3. See what I'm doing? Right? I'm getting those patterns in my brain so that I can use those to find easy inputs and outputs because then all I have to do is multiply my outputs by my A values and then I can make some changes. Okay? Pretty good? Okay, let's do another one. All right, so this one we are going to do f of x is equal to negative square root of x plus 7 plus 3. A H K. Your A H K should have looked like this. Did you get those descriptions right, Ethan? Nick? Did you get those descriptions correct? Okay, good. Okay, let's do our table. Okay, so table should have looked like this. <coughs> so in the first part of the table, you're you're reminding yourself of the parent pattern, right? Absolute value one one two two three three. Quadratic one one two four three nine. Square root one one four two nine three. Then we're going to shift our endpoint for our graph, right? So our endpoint is going to go left seven up three. One two three mm -hmm. four five six seven up one two. So left seven up three. And then if we just follow our parent patterns, right? So it's going to be right one down one, right one down one, right four, one, two, three, four, down one, two, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, down one, two, three, down one, two, three, right? And then we have our graph down like that and so just by following the parent pattern we get that reflection over that y equals three line and this still follows that same curve of the square root function because we didn't compress or stretch it at all we just reflected it over that y line good so far okay let's do our domain and range and set notation but you do those, and then I'll put the answers up in a second. Okay, you should have had your set notations for your domain and range like this. So negative 7 is the low end going out to positive infinity, and then negative infinity is the low end stopping at positive 3 for the range. Good? Okay, let's keep going. We'll do a little bit more on this one. This one's kind of the tricky one. Right. Oh, no. Let's do f of x. Sorry. So function notation. So a h k, and in this case. Now we have a B. So in the previous ones, we had a B of one. In fact, we should probably go back and write that in. Let's go back and write that in on these. So here we had a B equals positive one. On this one, we also had a B equals positive one. And again, if you remember, our function looked like this, right? It was f of x is equal to a times the square root of b times x minus h all underneath our square root bar plus k. That was our transformed parent function. Okay, so in this case, we have a b of negative 1. 
Okay. That's the only B I'm going to have you guys do. All right. And so what is that going to do? It's going to, it's going to stretch off to the left this time instead of the right. Right. So this is going to be a reflection, right? But it's going to be a reflection over a vertical line this time, not over a horizontal line. So let's get the other one. So A is one. H is what? Four. Still four, right? And K is? Negative six. Now, don't let this confuse you. Don't be like, okay, well, I know that I've got a negative out here, so then does that change things in here? Just stick with what you know about the variables. This is your B term. This is your H term. This is your K term. This is your A term. If you know where everybody's supposed to be, then you don't need to worry about changing any of the math signs. And so then we can get an idea of what we're doing here. So this is going to be no stretch or compress. We're still going to have a shift to the right of four for our H and we're going to have a shift down of six. So let's move our, let's move our vertice where it's supposed to be. So it's going to go right four and down six. Our endpoint is going to go right four and down six, right? We're going to go right one, two, three, four and down one, two, three, four, five, six down here. That's going to be our endpoint. And now we know something. We know that our graph is not going to go this way anymore. Now it's going to go this way because our B is negative. So what is our reflection here? When we say it reflects, what does it reflect over? No. No, if it reflected over the y-axis, it would be over here. Okay, so it's a vertical line, right? And what is the vertical line it reflects over? So if it was going this way and now it's going this way, it reflects off of this line right here, doesn't it? Which is x equals what? x equals 4. So the reflection for this b comes on the line x equals 4. Does that make sense? See what that is? Okay. And then if we do our table, then it makes it really easy. So you don't have to worry about doing all these square roots and all this. And you just go, okay, well, I know it's going to be 1, 1, 4, 2, 9, 3. My A value is still 1. Not using these, right? So then it's still going to be 1, 2, and 3. So then really all I have to do is shift my vertex 4 and 6. Know that because of the B, I'm going to the left, and then it's just one, one, four, two, nine, three. So then I can go one, 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 two, three, four, one, two, six, seven, eight, nine, one, two, three, like that. Make sense? And then do your inequality. Domain arrange. Okay, here's your domain As range. The same, so I'll give you one more that I'll show the answers for at the okay. end of the video. Okay. So I do want you to complete the two that we didn't do. But if I had given that to you a week ago, you'd be like, say, what? Now, let us remember. All right, let's do some prayer. Okay, so here's the quadratic one for you to take a look at that we didn't finish in class. And again, you used your table to go all the way up to 27. Obviously, we can't graph that here. But as long as you've gotten your vertex and these two points, sorry, this one and this one and this one and this one, that's good on both sides. That's plenty for you to draw this graph and so you should get an idea of what that looks like. All right, we'll take a look at the square root one that we didn't finish in class next. 
All right, here's the last square root one. Hopefully you got this one right in here. So again, right, just knowing where everything is, right? I know that this is my A value. I know that this is my B value. I know that this is my H value. I know that this is my K value, right? So I can get my H and K shift for my end point, positive seven, positive four, just swoop, swoop. That's the end point of my graph there, right? And then I know that instead of going this way on my graph, I'm going to be going this way on my graph because my B is negative and it's reflecting over that X equals seven line. Instead of going this way, I'm going this way, right? And then because my A is negative three, it's reflecting and stretching. And this time it's reflecting over this line, right? Instead of going up this way, I'm going this way, uh, you know, with the downward slope, obviously, you know. Uh, and so that's my reflection line there. And then I'm being stretched further, right? And so then instead of one, one, four, two, nine, three, being my pattern, I'm going to go one negative three, four negative six, nine negative nine. And so that's going to get me my deeper stretch down this way like that. And then we left off kind of alternating. So hopefully you did set notation on your domain and range for that one. All right. There you go.